We could all use a snow day, and it looks like maybe, just maybe, Mother Nature is going to cooperate either Monday or Tuesday or maybe a little bit of both. Enough uh, precipitation that it might bring some snow to the valley floors and uh, break through this high-pressure system that's really been plaguing the uh, northern part of Utah. That means it's time to start checking in with our area resorts, and we start with the A's. (laughs) That's Andrea and Alta. Uh, today and I think I just caught you, uh, Andrea Huskinson, up at Alta Ski Resort. Didn't you just get off the mountain? I did just get off the mountain. Being pretty good out there. I'll bet it does. Uh, we're not going to, you know, try and fool anybody. We could use a whole lot more snow, but the fact that you can actually get on a lift, find your way down uh, the mountain, probably feels awfully good. Yes, we were lucky with that early snow that we got in October. We actually opened with the uh, most snow we've ever opened with um, in a lot of years, so it's been good skiing. You know, I think people would be surprised at that. You said in your email to me a couple of days ago that uh, Alta opened the main chute at Baldy yesterday, and you thought, uh, how many years have you been there, by the way? This is my 27th year skiing here and my 12th year working here. Yeah, so a long time, but you said it's the earliest for uh, the main chute to actually open that you can remember. Yeah, yep. I, it's, I can't remember it opening this early, So, but it's the best skiing on the mountain right now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we should tell you that season-wise, if they're, if you're looking at totals, there's already been 89 inches up there. So you talk about that snow that came in October. It probably is going to rank in uh, the top 10, I don't know, maybe the top 5 uh, for early snowfall for northern Utah. And uh, Alta at Alta.com right now is reporting a 31-inch base. So hard to complain about that. Yeah, I mean, we opened with more snow this year than we have in the last four or five years. Yeah. So. Well, and it's been cold enough you've been able to make snow at night too, right? Yeah, it kind of started out slow as kids, the temperatures weren't as low as they normally are, but we have been able to make a little bit of snow. So that's definitely helped us with our base areas and higher traffic areas. Your neighbor there in uh, Little Cottonwood Canyon, Snowbird, opened this week with their 50th, but you're way beyond that at Alta. <laughs> if I'm uh, remembering right, you're in, what, your 84th, 85th year or something? 80, it's our 84th year this year. Wow. So, yep. We're a little older than our neighbors. <laughs> Just a little bit. And you know what? People don't mind that. Uh, every time we get together and talk about it or anybody talks about Alta, they talk about the vibe up there and uh, the longevity of that resort. And uh, the home feel of it, I think, makes a big difference for a lot of people these days. Yes. Yep. We're still, you know, it's pretty much the same as we were 84 years ago. You know, a few newer uh, chairlifts and stuff than we had 84 years ago, but pretty much the same, the same mountain. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at lifts and terrain status on the website. It says four lifts, 62 runs right now. Lots more to come, and hopefully Mother Nature does her part coming up Monday, Tuesday. What's new at the resort this year? The newest thing that we did is we put in some snow guns and snow fences so we can open the east, so rock and roll over off of the Supreme Lift. We can open that a little bit easier and earlier. This week, I noticed, uh, this this coming week, you've already started with some events that are planned, including the annual uh, partnership with Tracy Aviary. Oh, yeah. Our birding on skis is really popular. It's grown a lot in the last few years with just more and more people wanting to come up and do some bird watching while they ski around Alta. Yeah. And I don't think anybody would argue with me on this, but if you're looking for the best snow almost any month out of the ski year, it is always at Alta. Uh, you know, whoever decided to plant their uh, their post or their flag in that uh, corner of uh, Big Cottonwood Can- or Little Cottonwood Canyon Uh, really knew what they were doing up there. You know, I may be a little partial, but I just think it goes to show with the lack of snow we've had, you know, haven't been able to make snow. And we really have really good coverage. So it's just kind of the way Alta naturally sits that holds the snow really well. I think I... And we're then Canyon. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I've told this story on the air before, but uh, it's been four or five years ago that uh, my wife and I, Becky, went over to uh, Chamonix, France. I had an event in Paris, and I grabbed a little side trip Uh, And we uh, flew over there and spent just two days. We really want to go back and spend more. But here I am wandering the streets in this uh, great little Chamonix, France, with these uh, ski resorts. And what do I see coming from uh, one of the uh, restaurants but an Alta sweatshirt? 
we talk <laughs> we talk about Alta, you know, being uh, one of the oldest and one of the uh, I, I would say favorites of locals anyway uh, to get away and ski. But it really is known around the world. Oh yeah, yeah, we have quite. You know, we've been around a long time, and you know, just the, the natural terrain that we have up here, it is a lot like skiing in Europe. And it was founded, you know, Alpine and came over from Austria, so. There's a lot of similarities. Uh, and I'm sure that his friends and uh, and some of his acquaintances along the way helped to spread the word on that, in, on that side of the world. Tell people about some of the deals that you have. I know in the past there's been opportunities to ski in the afternoon hours uh, for nothing, if I remember right, if you're on uh, the rope toe there. You can ski on the rope toe, and then you can ski on the snow pine lift. Right now it's not open, but you can ski for free on those. And then we have a ski at three on Sunnyside that you can, um, we have a four pack that you can get a four pack to ski with no blackout aid. So and, you can ski four times on that, on that, that list. And that's after three o'clock in the afternoon? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. From three to four thirty. I've got Fred's uh, friends that have taken advantage of that in, in years past, uh, just because of work schedules. They actually are both in the business of doing voiceover work, so they get their work done in the morning for uh, their clients around the country, and then they jump in the car and head up there for an afternoon of skiing. So if your um, schedule uh, works well with that, there are some fantastic opportunities up there. It's a great place for uh, kids to learn too. Yes, yes. We have, you know, Alpa, everyone doesn't realize, but we have really good intermediate and beginner terrain. And yeah, it's a great place to come up and learn. You've got uh, season-long programs for kids. We we always want to reach out to uh, young families and we know when you look at uh, the price of lift tickets and then you have to rent skis or maybe you're interested in buying and then you've got to get all of the proper gear with boots and and uh, the right uh, clothes and certainly you want your kids to have helmets on. It can be a little overwhelming, but I'm always happy to pass along the great news that our area resorts are mindful of that and you find ways to make it more affordable for young families. Yeah, we have one. Um, we, have, we have different ones for different age groups, six and up. Um, AYC, the team at Alta Explorers, that's 9 through 13. It runs for eight weeks. We have the Junior Explorers that runs for eight weeks as well, and that's for ages six to eight. So there's a lot of different options. We have a race team for the kids. So there's a lot of options to, you know, get yourself, get your family up here and ski more than once or twice a year. Well, uh, our main message this week is that Alta is open for business and uh, hopefully there's some new sc- uh, snow coming on Monday or Tuesday, but you have already uh, expressed the fact that you were up there playing on it. And I know <laughs> I know, before the lifts were running, I had uh, some folks on their social media that were posting videos or pictures of them hiking up and then riding down. Uh, there are some people who are just unsufferable when it <laughs> comes to the opportunity <laughs> to strap on the boards. But it is that time again. Yes, it is. It's that time of the year and your feet, you know, got to they hurt a little bit, but then you push through it and now you're good. <laughs> yeah, I've got new skis and I've got new boots that I'm going to squeeze into. Uh, I actually went up to buy some new boots and found out that the boots that I had been slopping around in for the last four or five years were a full size too big. So, oh. yeah. Well, uh, that'll make a big difference. I tell people that your boots are the most important thing when you ski. Yeah, it is your connection to uh, the boards underneath you, and I'm a- I'm anxious to see if it improves my skiing. I could use all the help I can get, actually. <laughs> Um, I'm going to I'm going to dare to say I think it will help you. <laughs> all right. Uh that's perfect. Uh we look forward to a day when we can get up there and ski with you on the mountain, uh Andrea, but again I'll, I'll tell people you just need to go to alta.com, a l t a.com. That's a good place to start or just head on up Little Cottonwood Canyon and uh enjoy. Anything people need to know about parking by the way, uh Snowbird has made quite a few changes right next door there with um, multiple options and it has become one of the main questions we get from people. Yeah, so that is definitely something that's different this year. We're doing parking reservations on the weekends and holidays beginning December 18th. Um, most of our season pass holders have a parking code that they can just reuse it. Um, if you don't have a parking code, you'll have to pay $25 to park and it's from 8 to 1 p.m. So if you come up in the afternoon on the weekends, you won't have to worry about paying to park. So do you access that on the website or, or you have to have the app to do that? How does it work? Yeah, if you just go to alta.com and click on parking or type in parking, it'll pull you right up to 
it, it goes to a different page, um, but you can, it has all the information and you can just make your reservation right there. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm glad I asked. How far in advance can you do that? We opened, uh, they're open right now for reservations. And then every Sunday at three, we'll release some more, like the Sunday before the following Saturday. Mm-hmm. And so if one day's full, then you still have a chance of getting it on that day. So you could go today and make a reservation. All right, perfect. I'm glad I asked. All right, that'll do it. Uh, Alta.com, the place to get started, and uh, I'm so happy. I haven't been on the boards yet, obviously, but looking forward to it, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the mountain as well, Andrea. Thank you. Sounds good. Bye-bye. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll finish out the program, and uh, Roger Eggett will check in from Bear River Lodge. He's been a busy little beaver up there building cabins or at least a cabin. We'll find out uh, how the progress is going. Stay with me. All right, as we get ready to wrap up the program today, uh, I do want to check in with my buddy Roger Eggett from the Trax Power Sports and Bear River Lodge. They, of course, uh, sponsor this program week in and week out. I talked to you just briefly before we jumped on to record here, Roger. Sounds like you got a little bit of a cold. You've been working outside lately? <laughs> you know, I got a cold on thanks the day after Thanksgiving, and uh, we're going on a week now, and it's just crazy. But I got tested for COVID twice. Is that no COVID, just a head cold, so here I go. Well, standing outside building cabins in December will do that to you, I think. But it looks like you're making great progress anyway. Is it December or is it March or April or May right now? Because these fifty degree days are killing us. I mean it's I mean it's wonderful to build cabins, but it's not great for snowmobiling. Yeah. Well, there's a change coming and I'm sure you've been watching the forecast closer than I have, but Brett Benson was on with Amanda Dixon and I this morning on uh, Utah's morning news. And again, we're recording this program on Wednesday. Uh, but he was on with us this morning talking about a change coming Monday, Tuesday of next week that could bring uh, snow even down to the valley. So maybe we're finally going to crack the code here and make the turn to winter. Yeah, so we're hurrying. We're trying to – you've seen the pictures of Cabin 15. We're putting those walls up as fast as we can go. We're hoping to get a roof on soon. And actually this morning I just ordered the windows for it. And so, you know, I'm working with our buddy, Dylan, yeah. on the windows. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and my daughter's fiance, for those who don't know, but anyway, yeah. Yeah. So we're working on the window order and that cabin is going up quickly and it'll be ready for next summer, which will be a lot of fun, but we're ready to bring on the snow. Let's go snowmobiling. Yeah. And with that in mind, uh, let's use the time we have left here to talk about package deals for people. And there's a reason why we always talk in uh, tandem Tracks Power Sports Rentals and Bear River Lodge. The fact is, you can get all of these great tracks machines right there in the parking lot of your uh, cabin. So you literally walk out the front door, get in the uh, uh, machine of your choice, and then get right on the trail to the National Forest property. It's a beautiful thing. Right. You know, if they haven't been up to the UN, we do border the National Forest, which is just awesome. And in the winter, you do come up I-80 to Evanston and then bring the Mirror Lake back into Utah, where we are in Utah. But you go through Evanston in the winter, and you pull in our parking lot. You can drive right up to your cabin. The snowmobiles are all staged right there at the cabin. You leave from your cabin and go right into the forest. So we border the National Forest, and we literally have hundreds of miles of snowmobile trails and tens and tens of thousands of acres of off-trail riding. And so... The cabins and the snowmobile package bills get you a discount. So come stay for a night or two, take the equipment, and when you combine it as a package, you get a discount. And it just makes it really affordable to get out and play. It really does. And I I guess you'll do it for people that are staying one night, or do they need to stay more than that to take advantage of a package deal? To do the package deal, you stay two or three nights. So two nights, ideal. you want to come stay for two nights because then you can play the day in between. So if you... Check in on a Friday, snowmobile and play all day Saturday, come back, sit in the hot tub Saturday night, get a burger from the Dan restaurant, and then uh, stay in, stay Saturday night and check out Sunday. That's ideal if you want to get away for the weekend or a lot of people come up on a Thursday and they'll snowmobile Friday and Saturday and leave on Sunday. Or, you know, come any day of the week, but stay two or three nights and play and ride for one or two days. Yeah, and it really does make a difference to be able to stay that extra night. You you feel like you uh, really have disconnected from the world, and here's the beautiful thing. We always talk about the fact that your uh, relaxation and joy, enjoyment start in your driveway because 
you arrive, you uh, stop at the cabin and, uh, you know, on, drop the bags or whatever, and maybe you want to take the machines for a ride that day. But when you're done after one or two nights or three nights, you don't worry about cleaning it up. You just put the bags back in the car and head home, and uh, Bear River Lodge takes care of all of the rest. It's wonderful. Yeah, and, you know, what's great this year, Tim, is if you paid attention to our social media, we've wrapped the gazebo. So the gazebo is wrapped with clear siding. We put big barn doors on the end. We have space heaters in there. So if people want to come up and eat, we have that 40 seats in the little gazebo there that's all enclosed and heated. So eating this year is going to be awesome. The burgers are delicious. The fries, the potatoes are awesome. The shakes are awesome. The gourmet pancakes are awesome. So the den has really enhanced our ability to provide a great experience for people. Well, and I don't know how you lucked out, but Jamie can not only cook the burgers and the pancakes, but she also built those doors that went on, went on that uh, uh, setup outside, right? Yeah, she took over our garage and built barn doors, and uh, now they're hanging up, and she's done an awesome job. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, we always say making memories that are going to last a lifetime. That's the reason that you uh, started this whole project so many years ago. You just celebrated, was it 20 years? Twenty. We're in our 25th winter. That's we just hit year 24. 24. Uh, just a, amazing stuff. And if you haven't experienced it yourself, you really should. Here's where you go. BearRiverLodge.com is the place. Look at some of those uh, dates that are uh, open for availability and uh, decide how many nights you're going to go up and enjoy with the family. Roger, as always, thanks for your support of the program, but thanks for being a friend. Great, Tim. Thank you, and have a great week. Thank you. You too. We'll uh, take another break. Well, Actually, we're done here for the day, aren't we? Uh, don't go away because uh, the greenhouse is coming up next, and that means Maria Chaleos, Tom Bettis, with you for three great hours every Saturday here on KSL News Radio. I'll be back with you coming up Monday, starting at five with Utah's Morning News when Amanda Dixon rejoins me here. Have a great weekend.